controlled articular rotations. So this is your daily mobility program. Do it in the morning, do it at night, split it up, whatever you gotta do, just do it. We're starting with your neck, crunching, cracking, creaking, pretty normal with this. You're trying not to let any other part of your body move as you go through this. Uh, and just make sure that you're turning your head. So see there, I turn my head. As I look back there, I turn over the shoulder there, and just drag that chin along the clavicle. Uh, you just wanna make sure you're really um, expressing your full range of motion. Now your thoracic spine, same exact movement that you're doing with your cervical spine, uh, but it's just in your thoracic spine. You don't want from your rib cage down to move. Make sure you get that rotation. Hips don't move. As you go around through the back there, you're making sure not to dump into your lower back, meaning like right there, pull your chest up towards the ceiling as you turn. Good. Keep those hips facing forward. You want to keep your elbows straight here and hands by your side. You're moving your shoulder blades in the biggest circle that you possibly can. Big circle. When you squeeze in the front, almost like your pecs are going to cramp, you might feel squeezing that hard. When you do your shoulders here, especially as you're reaching across your body, um, you may find that your, uh, like your whole upper body is moving. Try not to let it move. You're rotating there, internally rotating, so you end up here, you're in a fully internally rotated, and then you're just reversing that back out. You wanna keep those elbow creases facing forward and imagine you're pushing through thick air or custard. So you're really, really generating a lot of force through your entire body. Uh, this is for rotation at those elbow joints. So they are gonna flex and extend, they're gonna bend, but you also have rotation that happens there, super important. Uh, and a lot of times when it gets sticky, there could be the cause of either hand and wrist pain or shoulder pain. So when you do your wrists here, you're gonna keep your fingers straight like knife hands and you're gonna move through that movement as much as you can. Get the wrists moving and try not to let your forearms rotate, especially as you move into like the side to side or in the uh, frontal plane and as we do those rotations. And if you need to do one hand at a time and pause the video, you can do that.
All right, hip mobility, my favorite. Now just make sure the leg you're standing on is staying locked out straight and your hips are staying straight and your pelvis is not moving. So you're moving your femur or your like thigh bone on a stable pelvis. Do the best you can. Uh, and just imagine you've got a string pulling your head up towards the ceiling. Here, I turned for you just so you can see another version of it. You don't have to move while you're doing it, but a string pulling you up towards the ceiling. So you're staying up nice and tall. So when you're doing your knee here, this flexion extension, see how those knees are staying in line? So especially as I go to like pull my heel up towards my butt, don't let your knee come forward. And then when you come down, really get a full extension, squeeze, squeeze that quad. Okay, so you're gonna lock your thigh up. You're doing like a headlock, but for your thigh. Um, and you're getting rotation at the tibia. So I like to keep my foot dorsiflexed and think about swinging my heel side to side. You're using your hamstring and your calf to get that motion, but we're going for tibial rotation. Um, but the thigh is not moving, so you're not moving at the hip. That's why you lock yourself up there. And then when you do your ankle right here, you're trying to get the biggest circle that you can possibly get, but without letting your shin rotate. It's especially like at this position where you go from uh, inversion to eversion up in that dorsiflex position, your shin might want to move. So just make those circles nice and big without letting your shin also move. Keep it to the ankle. All right, so you're doing four toes down, big toe up, and you wanna keep the edges of your feet and your heel down so you're not just rolling off to the side. Then the four toes go up, big toe stays down. You're gonna lift them all up. Just tap the big toe. And again, you've got, um, you know, the other parts of your foot are down. You're not just rolled off onto the middle of it. You're really trying to get movement to happen at the individual toes.